studio. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for being with us. You're a veteran of the Obama campaign, fair to say. Does Bernie Sanders remind you of the insurgent Barack Obama campaign? or is there not a good analogy there? Well, it remains to be seen, I think. Uh, you know, what President Obama was able to do is build a very broad coalition. I think Senator Sanders has, has engendered a lot of support amongst uh, a section of the Democratic electorate, young people, uh, bold progressives. Um, well, it's to be seen whether he can expand that base, uh, especially after we get out of Iowa and New Hampshire and into South Carolina and Nevada. The New York Times reporting today that the Clintons earned a whopping 20, uh, sorry, $125 million uh, in speaking fees since they've left the White House, $125 million, uh, a fifth of it in the last two years alone. Should that be the way that Bernie Sanders goes after them? Well, it wouldn't be surprising that that's what Senator Sanders' campaign would, would look to. I, he, Secretary Clinton's put out a plan to reform Wall Street. She's been in uh, favor of Dodd-Frank. Uh, Senator Sanders has put out a plan as well. Rather than debating the plans, it's not surprising that they're going after uh, some of these other ties. Um, what I think is most telling is uh, America Rising, a Republican uh, super PAC, has copied the same ex uh, exact attack. And I don't think that's what Democrats On Hillary for. Clinton. Correct. Yeah. Um, let's listen to a little bit of Hillary Clinton today. She was talking about foreign policy out on the trail. Senator Sanders doesn't talk very much about foreign policy, but when he does, it raises concerns because sometimes it can sound like he hasn't really thought it through. For example, he suggested we invite Iranian troops into Syria. That is like asking the arsonist to be the firefighter. As bad as things are in Syria, and they are, more Iranian troops are only going to make it worse. And sorry, that was actually yesterday, Hillary Clinton. Um, but does, it does sound a little bit like the same attack that she leveled on, on President Obama back in 2008. Can that work? Well, I, here's the difference. I think, you know, uh, Secretary Clinton has now had six or seven years as, as Secretary of State. Um, yeah. She's shown that she's got incredible experience in this area, and I think the, the, the area or the, the type of contrast that she's able to provide versus Senator Sanders is very different than she was uh, able to show versus Senator Obama, who in the Senate uh, took the lead on issues around nuclear proliferation and, and other foreign policy issues where he was an expert. The contrast wasn't as strong there. It is much stronger uh, this time around. And what about on the Bernie Sanders side of the equation, the contrast that, that he's trying to make? He has a new ad out. It ends with the slogan, a future to believe in. Mm -hmm. Sounds a little bit like hope and change. Sure. Well, what's interesting about that ad uh, is that's all there is in that ad other than, uh, you know, images of, of Iowans. I think it, it will play well in Iowa. I think it's a nice emotional, you know, it tugs at your heartstrings a little bit. But, it, it, again, it remains to be seen whether that uh, is going to play outside of Iowa and, frankly, whether Senator Sanders can turn some of that emotion, some of that passion, and turn it into caucus goers, which is a very different animal in Iowa. You sound like you're being careful not to handicap too much. You're, you're holding your bets. I'm not holding my bets. Well, listen, at this point, given how much uh, the Senator, uh, Senator Sanders campaign has touted their momentum, I think anything short of a victory there uh, in Iowa and New Hampshire would be a failure for them. But in the end, this is going to be a delegate fight. Um, and, you know, this is going to go uh, into Nevada, and, and uh, people are going to come out of Iowa and, and New Hampshire, both campaigns, with delegates, and they're going to go into Nevada and South Carolina and into March 1st. I think we'll have a better sense after that. Hari Savugan, thanks for being with us. Of course. Thanks for having Appreciate me. It. A top EPA administrator resigns amid the Flint water.